Good evening, this is Brian Brockway, uh, the athletic trainer slash uh, director here at Genesee Valley. Uh, today I'd like to inform the parents on the return to interscholastic athletics. And so I'm just gonna be going over th um, some of the guidelines and um, followed by uh, some questions and answers at the end. Um, well, first of all, let, let's start off by the low to moderate risk sports, which include soccer and cross country, uh, may play and practice as of 921. Um, and that is gonna be within the school region and counties until 1019, which at that point you can uh, go out of your county. However, uh, as of right now, we have all county games here at Genesee Valley. The high risk fall sports, uh, which is considered volleyball, has been moved to the spring season with a March 1st date start. So our fall sports, uh, the September 21st start date with an end date uh, at this point is undetermined. Uh, they're not sh exactly sure how sectionals is gonna look. The practice requirements include 10 prior to competition, and that's per NISFA handbook, uh, and one practice session per day, uh, which includes vigorous activity, is allowed. Uh, <clears throat> they did put in a seven consecutive day rule waiving starting 10-12. Uh, however, at Genesee Valley, we will uh, not have contests slash practices on Sunday unless we get into um, sectionals and they have a sectional game on a Sunday. There'll be no regional or state championships for fall. Uh, in the JV and modified, uh, the decision is by individual school district of whether or not they're playing. Winter sports um, will start November 30th with an end date to be determined. And spring sports will start uh, April 19th with an end date to be determined. We'll move right on to the guidelines for the student athletes. Um, Six feet maintained unless practicing or playing requirements a shorter distance. Uh, if shorter distance required, face coverings must be worn unless a player is unable to tolerate the face covering for physical activities such as practice and play. Coaches, athletic trainers, and other individuals not directly engaged in physical activity are required to wear face coverings. Personal items um, will be placed in each athlete's own bag and placed six foot apart during practices and games. Uh, students should tell coaches immediately if they are not feeling well. No hugging, high fives, shaking hands, fist pumps. Um, hand sanitizer and mask available. It's all fields and practices slash contests. As far as coaches, uh, it should be set in clear expectations for the student athletes from day one. Communication guidelines should be clear and consistent manner to the parents and students. Obviously no hugging, high fives, handshakes, fist pumps. Uh, keeping accurate res uh, records for those athletes and staffs who attend each practice and or contest in case of contact tracing is needed. Temperature checks for the students who did not have in-person class that day prior to the practice slash contest. As far as parents and spectators, uh, six feet maintained at all times. All spectators must wear face coverings when in common areas when they can't maintain six feet. Uh, sports, for sport event games, parties must limit spectators to two per player. Uh, disinfect students' personal equipment after each practice and game. As far as officials, um, they will be screened when they arrive on campus. Uh, game management uh, only. They're not responsible for monitoring the sidelines and, and, what, and so forth. That'll be supervised by uh, <clears throat> uh, the district. Uh, mandatory health screens and temperature checks for the students, faculty, and staff will be done in the mornings. Um, 
screening shall not be mandatory for delivery personnel uh, or uh, the patrons or spectators. Uh, as far as sport considerations, um, cross country, we'll, we'll, we'll talk cross country first. Uh, four or fewer teams will be limited to 12 participants per each team. So in other words, we can only have four teams compete um, with a maximum of 12, 12 per team at in a cross country event. Uh, meets will be staggered times uh, when for the starting times. Uh, as far as the hydration plan goes, uh, the water stations and open cups are discouraged, so each athlete will have to bring their, their own water bottle. Spectators should not congregate around the finish line. It is recommended a, a course be 200 yards from the start line to the narrowing point of the course. Obviously no shaking hands before and after match. Uh, this team tents are discouraged. Uh, teams are expected to provide uh, individual water for their athletes, which, which I had uh, talked about earlier, which is a water bottle. Let's talk a little bit about soccer. Uh, team benches, uh, we're not going to have any linear benches. Uh, our benches will be more staggered, uh, adjustable, back and forth. Um, a mandatory two-minute hydration mask break will be taken at the first dead ball after the 20-minute mark. Players must stay on the field during that break and may remove their mask as long as they are social distancing. And the use of a drop ball uh, has been suspended for soccer as well. The pre-game World Cup introduction uh, has been suspended, so uh, that's going to look as those. It's going to look similar to this. The players will um, go to their field positions, and uh, the bench personnel will line up on the touch line, six foot apart, for introductions. Uh, Maintaining six foot between subs on the center line during substitutions, hand sanitizers uh, should be used prior to entering the game. Goalkeepers may not spit on their gloves. They can wet them with a water bottle. Each athlete should bring their own water bottle. Uh, no hard materials should be worn on face coverings. Gloves are permissible. Long sleeves, uh, long pants are permissible. Undergarments are permissible, but must be similar, similar length to individual and solid-like color for team. As far as general Genesee Valley guidelines, um, locker room usage is not permissible. So at this time, bus garage restrooms can be used post-school for sport practice changing uh, capacity of two uh, and maintain social distancing. Athletic training room open for services post school, one student capacity uh, and can make appointment when needed. Dual participation is allowed for all seasons, that's fall, winter and spring. There will be a late bus at 515 for all sport practices to use for Angelica residents. Uh, if G if uh, Genesee Valley Central Schools goes full remote during any time related to COVID-19, all athletic practices slash contests will be suspended. And families are responsible to transport athletes who are not participating in in-class in classes to campus for practice or to campus to ride that bus to a game. Some frequently asked questions. Uh, who has the authority to amend, change state issued guidelines relevant to um, interscholastic sports? State officials, that's New York State Health, New York State uh, Education Department 
have the only entities to authorize, modify, amend, revise guidelines provided to schools. NISFA um, is required to follow state guidelines, but they are only authorized to amend their own NISFA rules or, and or regulations. Uh, do students need a physical exam to participate in the fall athletic season? The answer is no. Uh, New York State Ed has waived the physical uh, exam requirements for students for 2020 fall season only. Uh, according to the New York State Department, any student who has had a physical during the 2018-2019 or 2019-2020 school year is eligible to participate in interscholastic athletics this fall 2020, providing that they uh, submit an updated health history form from the district. At this time, there's no extensions granted for the winter and or spring athletes. Can an athlete participate in the fall season as well as fall two season, which starts March 1st? The answer is yes. If anybody has any additional questions, feel free to email me at bbrockway at genvalley.org.